Welcome to Thought for the Day. My name is Sheila. I worship at Hyde Church in the New Forest, one of the seven churches in the Avon Valley Church's benefice. Yesterday, we celebrated St Luke's Day with a service of wholeness and healing. St Luke was the author both of the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles which makes up about a quarter of the New Testament. Both are addressed to Theophilus, whose name means one who loves God. He was likely to have been a Roman, a person of standing, and possibly Luke's patron, responsible for the copying and distribution of his writings. Luke wrote in polished Greek with literary skills and was an able historian. He's only referred to three times in the New Testament, all in Paul's letters. In Colossians 4.14, Paul refers to Luke as my beloved physician, or in the New International Version, our dear friend Luke the doctor. In Philemon, he is amongst others sending greetings and in 2 Timothy 4.11, when Paul is imprisoned in a cold dungeon in Rome, Paul writes rather sadly, only Luke is with me. Luke is thought to have been a Gentile Christian, come from Syrian Antioch. No one knows where he studied medicine. Throughout both the Gospel and Acts, there is medical terminology used in Hippocratic medicine. Hippocrates brought medicine into the realm of science. He broke with the Greek tradition that people were sick because the gods were angry. The Hippocratic school was patient-centered and emphasized the importance of the doctor-patient relationship. We are indebted to Dr Luke for so much, both in his Gospel and the Acts. Where would we be without the account of the coming of the Holy Spirit, the history of the early Church, and the continuing of miracles of healing? The story of Acts is written in the third person until chapter 16, verse 10, when Luke unobtrusively changes to we. Luke joined Paul on his second journey in Troas in AD 51 and accompanied him to Macedonia, journeying to Philippi. It seems likely that he remained there to encourage the church. He rejoins Paul on his third journey in AD 57 with seven other brothers who were taking the collection for the needy in Jerusalem. After Paul's arrest in Jerusalem and imprisonment in Caesarea, nothing is heard of Luke until he and Aristarchus board a ship with Paul on his final journey to Rome. It seems likely that he both supported Paul in prison in Caesarea and took the opportunity to gather material for his gospel from eyewitnesses. In his introduction to the Gospel, Luke, Luke sets out his purpose in writing. William will read it to us now. Luke chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us. Just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. He must have interviewed Mary to get the story of John the Baptist's birth, also the infancy story, 
and when the boy Jesus was found in the temple, aged 12. To Luke, we owe some of the most cherished stories in the Gospels. The parable of the Good Samaritan and the prodigal son. And the story of the unrecognised stranger, stranger on the road to Emmaus. He was so thorough in his investigations that he records five healing miracles and 13 parables that are not included in the other Gospels. Reading Luke's Gospel gives a good idea of his character as he emphasised how Jesus loved the poor and the outsider and wanted the door to God's kingdom open to all and saw hope in God's mercy for everyone. He wanted to show the place of the Gentile Christian in God's kingdom, that it's based on the teaching of Jesus. He highlights the sympathy and respect Jesus had for women, and they play a prominent part in his account. More than any of the other evangelists, he records how often Jesus went aside to pray. He ends his gospel with Jesus opening the eyes of the disciples to understand the scriptures. He tells of the forthcoming of the Holy Spirit and ends with a summary of the Ascension, which he expands at the beginning of his second volume, Acts. Luke is the patron saint of doctors and artists. Many hospitals and hospices have been named after him. His symbol is a bull, a figure of sacrifice, service and strength. At the end of the fourth century, Basil of Caesarea founded the first Christian hospital. After that, many monasteries included accommodation for the sick, the poor and travellers. Emperor Charlemagne directed that a hospital be attached to every cathedral built in his empire. Religious institutions continued to provide most of the care for the sick. A French surgeon, Ambrose Paré, who lived in the 16th century, is considered by some the father of modern surgery. His philosophy throughout his career was epitomised by a saying in his personal notes about a patient. I bandaged him. God healed him. There is still a hospital in France named after him. In the early modern era, healing transitioned into a secular affair. However, since the second half of the 20th century, the medical profession have become more concerned with the whole person. This has resulted in a growing place for chaplaincy in the NHS. Chaplains are now part of the health team, resourcing both patients and staff. At the same time, the ch in the church, there has been a resurgence of prayer for healing. It's now become, become common to believe that God brings healing to people today, usually in small, quiet ways, but sometimes in a more dramatic form. And that we are called to continue to pray for healing, even when it seems slow in coming. Jesus healed. We have his spirit within us, and he promised we would do even greater things. From time to time, I've been asked about my experience of miraculous healing in response to prayer. I have not seen any instances of dramatic instant healing, but I have friends who have both experienced and witnessed such healings. What I have experienced on many occasions is unexpectedly rapid responses to treatment often because a whole church is praying. The first occasion was early in my career. 
I was working as a junior doctor in Southampton and worshipped at Above Bar Church. A couple from the church had a baby who devel developed convulsions following a shortage of oxygen around the time of birth. The outlook in this situation for the child's development was poor. However, his parents were optimistic and told me the whole church was praying. Just over a year later, I was back in the area for a weekend and decided to go to the church. To my delight, the couple and their little boy were there. He was walking and they assured me that his development was normal. Later, when I had become a consultant one Sunday in church, two things happened. In the prayers, we were given the opportunity to silently pray for healing for anyone known to us. At the time, all my friends and family were in good shape and I felt I had no one to pray for. In a light bulb moment, I thought of all my patients in the hospital that I had not prayed for. That changed me from the occasional arrow prayer to more consistent praying, though I have to admit to not a few lapses. The other thing that happened was that people were invited to go up for prayer. Quite a few of the youth group went. They were, as far as I knew, healthy teenagers. At that point, it dawned on me that prayer for healing was so much broader than just physical healing. I think I was a slow learner. This is something I have experienced personally. The prayer I received for healing resulted in so much more than physical healing. God is the author of all healing, whether direct or through medical invention, intervention, and whether physical, emotional or spiritual. Returning to Luke, what could we learn? He was humble and didn't draw attention to himself. His focus was on Jesus, both in the gospel and in Acts, where the emphasis is on preaching the good news in the power of the Spirit. He used his gifts and experience to full effect. I'm sure he would have looked after both the medical and emotional needs of Paul and the other brothers and sisters. Let us pray. Almighty God, who inspired your servant Luke the physician to set forth in the gospel the love and healing power of your Son. Graciously continue in your church this love and power to heal. To the praise and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Thought for the Day. We'll be here tomorrow, same time. I will close with an evening hymn. Apologies for those listening at 10, but I know many of you join us later. The hymn is At Even Ere the Sun Was Set. Goodbye.